So in this video, I wanted to take a quick look at a pen that I know a lot of people are looking forward to. Uh, this is something that I believe is pretty new and it's definitely something that was new to me. I had never heard of it before, I don't know, maybe a week or so ago, uh, but I tracked one down online, paid for it, shipped it over, and here it is. It is a Parker Jotter XL. Uh, this is it right here. The Parker Jotter XL is a slightly larger version of the classic Jotter. Uh, the website says it's 7% larger in length and width, uh, but it seems a whole lot larger than that to me, uh, at least more than 7%, but uh, here it is. I bought the version with the stainless steel upper and the matte black lower. It also comes in a bunch of other colors, or maybe uh, a few other colors, a green, a blue, and a sort of a light gray. This is a matte black, it's really, to me, more of a dark gray, it's almost bluish. Uh, there's no full stainless steel option, no full brushed stainless steel option that is. I'm not sure what this lower part is. It does appear to be made of some sort of metal. So it might be aluminum, it might be steel, I'm not really sure. I'll try to figure that out in the next few minutes. But it is a full metal pen with the same click action as the jack, as the uh, jotter, maybe slightly less metallic, and the same arrowhead style clip. You can see some of the designs are changed. This stainless steel one has that little cup piece there. Uh, that has been, looks like hidden away on the jotter. Button design is the same, or at least very similar. And then here's the big difference is the lower on the Jotter XL has that coating material. It looks like a powder coat to me, while this one is full stainless. Uh, the standard Jotter is also sold in uh, this plastic version as well with the plastic lower. As for the size, again, the website says it's a 7% difference. Uh, I really have no way of measuring except to do some sort of volumetric testing, which I'm not gonna do, uh, but they said 7%. To me, the difference is, you know, maybe, let's uh, line it up. It's a little bit under half an inch difference. Uh, the dimension of this one is uh, 130 millimeters in length by 10 millimeters in width. That's what the website says. Before we move on to a closer inspection of the Jotter XL, I just wanted to do a quick weight test and just finish out the comparison segment. At the scale, it's a fairly accurate scale. Do the Jotter XL, got 19 grams, full stainless steel Jotter, 14.4 grams, and now we'll go with the jotter with the plastic bottom, 11.4. So, fairly sizable difference from a you know, relative basis. You know, in an absolute sense, it's not a huge difference. You're only talking about eight grams or so. But, uh, you know, again, relative from one pen to the next, you're looking at a pretty sizable weight increase from this plastic and stainless version up to the full metal expanded size of the Jotter XL. Get that click again. So definitely a Jotter feel to it. It does seem to be modified in some way. Here's the uh, classic stainless steel Jotter. Kind of has a, a rawness to it, a metal metallic sound to it, where this one has the same feel but a slightly different sound. Definitely more muted. And now we'll move over to the uh, anniversary edition. Hard to say, uh, you take what you will from that. Just to go back to that button design, we could see the this is the Jotter XL. I'll keep that on the rightmost side. The Jotter XL does have that slightly different 
upper piece that was definitely cleaned up, which is probably a relatively minor design tweak, but worth noting. These two gyres also have a, a one piece clip. It has a collar and a clip. This gyre looks like the clip is uh, probably also a ring, but that's handled inside of the barrel. It's not built into this collar up here. Anyway, not a huge deal, but worth noting. And now take the jotter apart. Upper seems fairly similar, spring-loaded. Not really too much to observe. I do see some plastic lining inside. The refill is the standard Parker Quink Flow ballpoint refill. Uh, I've talked about this a number of times. This is the 1.0 millimeter. You can check back for some previous reviews and writing samples. I won't get into that now since this video is already going kind of long. Opening up the stainless steel jotter, we do see that plastic insert in there as well. So it looks like the design is really very similar from one to the next. These two are not interchangeable. I guess that shouldn't be shocking, but it's worth checking out. So it looks like it's a metal lower with a plastic insert. And this is probably, I don't know if it's, it doesn't move. So it's probably epoxied in there. For reference, this stainless steel version has a stainless steel lower with a metal insert. And I, I'm pretty positive that it's not the same piece. It's not like this is a machined stainless steel piece and this is machined out of that. I believe this is just either a press fit in there or more likely just glued in there. So from what you're getting is very similar, right? It's a two piece design, but uh, this one is all metal and this one does move to what appears to be a plastic piece. Yeah, I'm almost positive that's plastic. So probably not a huge deal, maybe some minor sacrifice in strength there, but honestly, I would imagine that whatever's holding these two pieces together is gonna fail before you crack this barrel. Uh, like this is metal, but the increased diameter of this barrel is gonna add uh, substantially to the strength, I would guess. As for the lower, it's light. Hard to tell if this is aluminum or steel. It, I wanna say it's aluminum, of course it is powder coated, uh, but I'm sure someone out there in the comments will know better than me. So I'd be curious to hear what you have to say. Really not too much else to see there. And of course that refill is a Parker G2 style refill. So it's interchangeable. Uh, for example, I have this Schneider refill, put that in here. Uh, it's completely up to you. I know a lot of people like to stick with that classic quink flow refill. It does get the job done and it's very versatile. Just to look at the anniversary edition, that is to say the stainless and plastic jotter. I believe this one does use a, a single piece of plastic, just like some sort of injection mold, mold injection molded piece. Uh, and you can see some of those marks here uh, where it's, or maybe it is two piece, maybe this is part here. It's hard to tell. No, nah, I'm going with a single piece for this one. So I guess there is uh, some retooling that's been done and some redesigned with this Jotter XL. Again, I, I really just got this thing in, so I don't have a lot of time spent with it. I can say it's a nice size. It, it feels like in a uh, you know, full-sized adult style pen where the standard Jotter, I like it, but it can feel a bit small. Uh, what I typically say with the Jotter is for me, it, it is what it sounds like is a pen for jotting. It's good for uh, a few minutes here and a few minutes there, but after a while, I tend to get tired of writing with it uh, and tired of writing with it from hand fatigue, not tired of like, oh man, I'm tired of this pen. So 
the goal is to uh, cut back on that with the Jotter XL and have something that you can use for a longer period of time. And uh, from what I can see, that's been accomplished. You still have that nice tapered shape, but what you uh, are gaining is extra diameter here. And that is really what I needed out of this pen. You have the same problem here where it's hard to figure out where to grip it. I tend to go too high on these or too low. You gotta find that sweet spot and uh, grip there, otherwise your hand will get tired. That'll be a lot easier on the XL. It's definitely a more substantial pen. And let's just wrap this up with some size comparisons. Here we have the Jotter XL next to the standard Jotter. I'll move back to the stainless steel version because I think people are a little bit more comfortable with that one. It's probably what more people own. For reference, here is a G2 cartridge. So this is stuff everyone should have at home. And now throw out a couple different pens. We'll see what we have laying around. Here's a Uniball Power Tank, very solid pen. Highly underrated. Here's an uh, Pentel Energel X. Another standard and very good pen, uh, but it is on the larger side. And here we have the Jetstream Prime Single. Definitely not as large as that Energel. And here's something on the smaller side which is a uh, G301. I'll put that one right here. So it's a fairly unscientific lineup of these pens. Uh, basically, long story short, the Parker Jotter is gonna move you from being a small size pen, like the standard Jotter, up to uh, something that's gonna be more of a uh, normal size pen, uh, and then even getting this being something on a little bit on the larger side, like the Energel. And I don't look at this pen and think it's huge, but it's definitely uh, you know wider diameter and slightly longer than your standard day-to-day -day pen, with this being a good stand-in for a day-to-day -day pen. Or like, uh, just close this out with a Papermate. And then a, uh, a Parker, sorry, a Pilot G Knock, which is, uh, I would say, a very like medium to average size pen. So, there you go. Parker Jotter XL, pretty nice comparison in size towards that G Knock or Pilot. G2, obviously you're gonna lose the tapered grip, which I really like, and it's not rubberized. I tend to go with a rubberized grip, but you're losing those things and you're getting the durability and style of the Jotter with the uh, new color scheme and the larger size. The powder coating is doesn't really have much grip to it. It's still kind of slippery, so if you complained about the slipperiness of the Jotter, that's not changing, so. There you have it, Parker Jotter XL. Expect, uh, expect to spend about $35 to $40 on it. I'm sure prices will drop, but that's what it's going for now. So thanks for watching.